On a chilly January 1st morning, my partner and I embarked on a quest to find the perfect gym. Eager to kick off the new year with healthy habits, we spent the day researching various gyms in our vicinity and exploring the classes they offered. As fitness enthusiasts with specific preferences, we wanted to find a place that catered to our individual needs. However, this endeavor proved to be a bit challenging, as not all gyms had everything we desired. I, being the kind of guy who always aimed to make my girlfriend happy, suggested that we prioritize her preferences. I assured her that I was open to trying out something new if it meant she could enjoy the classes she wanted. Our search finally led us to a gym just around the corner from our home, a place we had overlooked despite having lived in the neighborhood for a few years. Intrigued, we decided to give it a shot. The following day, on January 2nd, we excitedly made our way to the gym and signed up for their three-month plan. We didn't want to commit to a year-long membership in case we didn't enjoy the experience. After the paperwork was done, we dove straight into a short workout session together, trying to familiarize ourselves with the gym's layout and the array of equipment available. It turned out to be a fantastic day and we found ourselves liking the atmosphere and the people. As the next few days passed, we eagerly attended various classes, getting to know the different instructors and even making a few new friends. The gym was turning out to be precisely what we needed, a place to challenge ourselves physically while having a great time. Fast forward a couple of weeks and we decided to mix things up a bit by going to the gym on a Friday. Typically, Lisa had to work on Fridays, and I didn't enjoy going without her. However, on this particular Friday, Lisa had the day off, so we saw it as a golden opportunity to work out together. Little did we know that Fridays were when the gym held weightlifting classes that attracted some seriously intimidating bodybuilder types. As we walked in, we couldn't help but feel a bit out of place among these behemoth gym goers. Nevertheless, we focused on our workout, determined not to let their presence deter us. However, our determination was tested when one of the enormous guys started staring intently at Lisa. His unwavering gaze made both of us feel uncomfortable, and we exchanged glances, wondering if we were overthinking it. But it didn't stop there. The man audaciously approached us, and with a hint of arrogance, he commented on Lisa's appearance, as if trying to assert his dominance. Feeling uneasy and protective, I tried to intervene calmly, but he seemed to brush off my objections. Instead, he continued to gaze at Lisa, undeterred by my presence. Growing frustrated, I tried to defuse the situation by emphasizing that Lisa was with me and that we wanted to be left alone. His dismissive attitude toward me only further fueled my unease. To make matters worse, I made an ill-advised comment about him discussing doping with his buddies, not fully realizing the implications of provoking someone who potentially abused steroids. Surprisingly, he walked away, and we thought that would be the end of it. However, as we turned our attention back to our workout, the man's demeanor shifted dramatically. Suddenly, without warning, he hurled a dumbbell in our direction, shattering a mirror just inches from my head. Shocked and fearing for our safety, we quickly gathered our belongings and headed straight for the gym's office to report the incident to the manager and call the police. Thankfully, the police arrived promptly, and the man was arrested on the spot. During their investigation, they found concerning items in his car, such as ropes, duct tape, zip ties, a gun, and a couple of knives indicating that his intentions might have been far more sinister than we could have imagined. As it turned out, he had harbored resentment toward us for pressing charges against him, which made it relatively easy for him to find our address online. The police assured us that he would be charged with home invasion and attempted abduction, and his bail was set so high that he wouldn't be able to afford it, providing us with some sense of relief. In the following weeks, we took precautions to ensure our safety, although we hadn't received any updates on the case. However, after three weeks, we were informed that the man had been released, sending shivers down our spines. Although we lived in a big city and didn't venture out often, 
the thought of encountering him again weighed heavily on our minds. Despite our concerns, we continued going to the gym, hoping that lightning wouldn't strike twice. Gradually, our fears subsided as we returned to our routines without any further incidents. It seemed as though the man had vanished into the shadows, giving us the opportunity to reclaim our sense of security. However, just as we began to feel comfortable again, our lives were thrown into disarray when we woke up one night to the sound of Lisa frantically shaking me awake. Her wide eyes and trembling voice told me everything I needed to know. Someone was in our house. Quickly springing into action, I grabbed the baseball bat I kept under the bed and approached the bedroom door cautiously. Peering through the crack, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was the same menacing man from the gym, standing in our living room as if he owned the place. Suppressing my panic, I locked the door as quietly as possible and motioned for Lisa to call the police while trying to keep her calm to avoid alerting the intruder. In a moment of desperate improvisation, I decided that our best chance of escape was through the bedroom window that led to the side yard. After ensuring that Lisa climbed out first, I followed her lead, closing the window behind us to prevent the man from knowing our escape route. With adrenaline coursing through our veins, we sought refuge at our neighbor's house, explaining the dire situation to them while waiting for the police to arrive. As we anxiously peeked through their window, we witnessed the police confronting the intruder and promptly apprehending him. The police's search of his car revealed even more disturbing evidence, solidifying our belief that he had intended to do us harm. The fact that he had been able to track us down using our names from public records and had broken into our home filled us with a mixture of anger, fear, and vulnerability. Thankfully, the man was charged once again, this time with home invasion and attempted abduction. Due to the severity of his crimes and the abundance of evidence against him, his bail was set so high that he remained incarcerated while awaiting trial. In the aftermath of this terrifying ordeal, we decided that moving to a different house, closer to Lisa's parents, was the best course of action to ensure our safety and peace of mind. Although we were well aware that this might not guarantee complete security, we believed it was a necessary step to distance ourselves from this dangerous individual. Despite the traumatic experience, we attempted to regain a sense of normalcy, finding solace in the fact that the man was behind bars. However, the haunting question of his motives and what he had planned for us that fateful night would forever remain unanswered. Looking back, I shuddered at the thought of how close we came to danger, but I also cherished the fact that we emerged from the harrowing experience stronger and more cautious. It served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of life and the importance of staying vigilant and aware of our surroundings. Life eventually resumed its course and we resumed our daily routines, determined not to let this traumatic event define our lives. As we settled into our new home, surrounded by the love and support of Lisa's family, we found comfort in the knowledge that we had each other to lean on during both the brightest and darkest moments of life. The man may have disrupted our sense of security temporarily, but he failed to break our spirit and our determination to embrace life with courage and resilience. In the serene and picturesque region of the Illinois Great Lakes, a place usually known for its tranquil beauty, November brought with it a seasonal shift that brought forth turbulent windstorms. This peculiar phenomenon was not exclusive to this area alone, but could be observed in other locales neighboring bodies of water. As the cold winds swept through the landscape, we would often find ourselves at the mercy of these violent gusts, their origins and causes shrouded in mystery. But on this particular day, the enigma of their origins was not at the forefront of my mind. After an arduous day at work, I found myself on the journey back home, a routine I had grown accustomed to. However, this time, as I made a pit stop at the nearby grocery store, I was met with a scene of chaotic disorder. The unforgiving winds turned ordinary shopping carts into unpredictable projectiles, tumbling across the parking lot. The force was so potent that even my own footing became precarious, and I had to steady myself several times to avoid falling. Stepping outside, I discovered the wind's ferocity rendered any conversation futile, 
as its roaring drowned out all attempts at communication. Judging by the way the trees thrashed and swayed, it seemed as though they might just uproot and detach themselves from the earth altogether. The tempestuous storm darkened the sky, and the sun's warmth was replaced by a bone-chilling coldness that penetrated to the core. With the onset of evening, the situation worsened. The wind's unyielding power dealt a devastating blow, causing a widespread power outage in my neighborhood. Darkness enveloped the surroundings, plunging everything into obsidian blackness. The wind's wailing now became the sole auditory sensation, a haunting symphony of nature's wrath. In this pitch-black environment, I found myself relying on the feeble light emitted by my cell phone to navigate my way around. Scrounging through my home, I eventually stumbled upon a trusty old lantern, which, upon igniting, offered a faint yet reassuring glow. An eerie ambience now filled the air, and as I sat there, engulfed in shadows and flickering light, I decided to divert my attention from the unsettling scenario outside and delve into the pages of a book. The suspenseful narrative I held in my hands intertwined with the ominous backdrop, and surprisingly, I found myself relishing the tingling sensation of fear that coursed through my veins. Perhaps it was the adrenaline or the primal fascination with the unknown, but the ominous ambience had a strange allure, despite my aloneness in this forsaken darkness. My reading was interrupted suddenly by a jarring crash outside the window. Jumping to my feet, my mind leaped to the conclusion that a mighty branch had succumbed to the wind's assault, breaking through the glass. However, when I stood up, my heart sank as I realized that the entire house remained shrouded in darkness, except for the beacon of light emanating from the lantern by my side. In the dim illumination, I discerned a mysterious silhouette, a figure of a large man standing in the kitchen doorway, motionless, his gaze fixated on me. The obscurity masked any semblance of his identity, rendering him an enigmatic presence. My instincts took control as I brandished the lantern defensively, ready to hurl it at the intruder. My voice trembled, but I managed to muster a stern warning, demanding that he depart my home immediately or risk facing the consequences. Initially, the stranger remained unfazed, neither moving nor uttering a single word. The suspense felt eternal, each passing second an eternity of dread. Then, in an instant, he swiftly retreated into the kitchen, disappearing into the shadows. Reacting swiftly, I rushed to the doorway, just in time to witness him fleeing through the very window he had likely used to gain unlawful entry. Fear still coursing through my veins, I immediately contacted the authorities, calling the police to report the harrowing encounter. Despite my urgency, their response was hindered by the chaotic night that the windstorm had bestowed upon the town. They eventually arrived, conjecturing that the intruder must have been an opportunist taking advantage of the prevailing darkness due to the power outage. In retrospect, the memory of that spine-chilling night continues to haunt me, an indelible mark etched into my consciousness. The ferocity of nature's elements intertwined with the enigmatic presence of a stranger had created an ambience of fear and fascination, leaving me with an experience I shall never forget, especially because I was left to endure it all alone. When I was 13 years old, I had a terrifying experience that I will never forget. It was a day like any other, but for the first time in my life, I had to stay home from school due to an illness. As someone who had received perfect attendance awards throughout my academic journey, it was disappointing and frustrating to have my streak broken. Both my parents worked, and they couldn't afford to take time off to stay home with me. Although I was 13 and considered old enough to be on my own without a babysitter, it was still a daunting thought to be alone at home for an entire day. The day was made even more memorable by the heavy rain pouring down relentlessly. The raindrops were hitting the roof so loudly that it was almost impossible to concentrate on anything. Seeking some distraction, I decided to head downstairs to the living room and watch some television. As I immersed myself in the TV show, I was startled by the sound of the doorbell ringing. At first, I hesitated to answer, assuming it was some random visitor or salesman. 
Besides, my parents never came home at that time of the day, so it couldn't be anything urgent. However, the person outside seemed determined and impatient. The doorbell continued to ring incessantly, as if someone urgently needed my attention. Annoyed and trying to focus on my show, I chose to ignore the persistent ringing. But then, from the corner of my eye, I noticed movement outside the living room window. My heart skipped a beat as I saw a man peering inside. The sudden realization that I was being watched sent chills down my spine. Panic and fear gripped me, and I quickly moved away from the window, hoping he hadn't seen me notice him. I closed the blinds, hoping that would discourage him from persisting. However, to my horror, the doorbell started ringing again, and this time, it was accompanied by pounding on the door. The man outside was not giving up. In fact, he seemed to be growing more agitated. Hey, I know you're in there, he shouted through the window. It's pouring rain out here. Let me in. His voice was laced with an unsettling mixture of desperation and anger. I knew I couldn't open the door for a stranger, no matter how pitiful this plea sounded. My gut feeling told me something was terribly wrong, and my instincts were screaming at me to stay safe. The man outside seemed to sense my reluctance and started making threats. If you don't open the door right now, you'll deeply regret it. He warned, his tone now menacing and dangerous. The ringing and pounding continued, and it became apparent that this man wasn't going to leave easily. Frightened and unsure of what to do, I finally mustered the courage to call for help. I picked up the phone and dialed 911, hoping that the authorities would arrive soon. Remarkably, as soon as I dialed, the ringing and pounding abruptly ceased. I strained my ears and heard the distant sound of a police siren. It turned out that a police officer happened to be nearby and responded quickly to the emergency call. The man outside, realizing the police were coming, tried to make a run for it, but he was apprehended before he could escape. The arrival of the police was a relief and I felt safer knowing that the situation was under control. Later it was revealed that the man had a history of criminal activities and he was found to be carrying several knives. He had multiple arrest warrants against him, making the situation even more chilling. In the aftermath of this terrifying encounter, my parents were contacted and rushed home from work. They were understandably shaken and grateful that I had the presence of mind to call for help. The incident served as a sobering reminder of the importance of being cautious and aware of potential dangers, even in the comfort of one's home. Looking back on that rainy day, I can't help but shudder at the thought of what might have happened if the man had managed to get inside. It was a close call, and it left a lasting impact on me. I since become more vigilant and aware of my surroundings, realizing that safety should never be taken for granted.